Mr. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. All of the above. Thank God for uh, the opportunity always. I always preface my stand before God's people. You know, because He didn't have to choose me, He could have cho chosen either any one of you all. Yet He chose you. Many are called, but few are chosen. And you have to know the difference and distinguish in terms of who you are. And one of the things that let me let me just start off first first saying uh, appreciate uh, Pastor and First Lady uh, Dicky. Give them a hand. So, it's always uh, it's amazing how God uh, connects us. You know, some of us are permanent fixtures. Some are filling stations. You know, you get your oil changed, you get your wipers changed, you get your tire changed. And you keep going. But how many know that God has made us a permanent fixture? Amen. And it's very important in terms of the process uh, that ensures us the expected end of what God promised us. So starting out with that, um, let's go to, I'm going to go right into this word. One of the things I want to say, when he got me on the phone earlier that day, no kidding, and this happens every single time he calls me. If I haven't heard from him in a year, two years, or whatever, God always prefaces me with him coming before me before he calls me. It has happened every single time. Without, and, and this last time, I was doing something in my room, and him and first lady came before me. And I said to myself, I need to call him. And you know how you get distracted, keep doing what you're doing. I forgot. Lo and behold, I look at my phone and it scared me. <laughs> this number coming, his name actually coming through Messenger. I said, well, Messenger, you got my, but then I thought about it. He doesn't have my new number. But God made a way. Because what? He was giving me an enroll earlier that day. That he was trying to make that contact. And how many know God nudges you throughout the day in regard to how he's trying to navigate his will continuously so that we don't miss Okay, so that we stay aligned, we stay in order, and we are guaranteed the end result. One of the things I mentioned to him, and God gave me a further definition of the thing that I said to you, because oftentimes what happens is, Deliverance has to come from another place, even sometimes your honor and your respect and your acknowledgement has to come from another place. That is an indictment against the place that it should have come from. Because as Shirley Caesar said at one time, I don't think much of a frog, a frog that won't praise its own fun. And see, when God has to do the reverse of what his preset order should be, it shows there's an indictment. And even the United States, can you give me a little bit more volume? Even the United States, there we go. What has happened is, we as a people have been indoctrinated with an impotent nature. 
okay? We have been told things. We have been dictated to. And it, it has become our mindset. Not for reasons to benefit us, but for reasons that what? Those who feel superior to make us feel inferior so that they can feel entitled yes. in terms of what? Controlling you. Yes. But I want to serve you notice that in this hour we're in right now, there was some that I told before this year came in. I said, the Lord told me it's going to be many funerals and many weddings. And then he told me, it's your wealth appointment. This was before coronavirus even came into play. He said, there's going to be many weddings and many funerals. Well, we're already seeing the evidence of that. But what I'm here to tell you today is to reset your mind according to the efficacy that has been dictated to you so that we can change your what? Your perspective so that you can have the right interpretation of trajectory of thought so that you'll know what's rightfully yours aside from what's been dictated. And in reference to that, this is the first time I saw this. When the Lord said to me, he said, I've given him notoriety in other nations. See, part of the essence of who you are is international. Okay? But irregardless of that, your first acknowledgement of who you are should have come from where you came from. Okay? But God did, sometimes God has to do the reverse because people refuse to acknowledge you for who you are. Because guess what? Your power, your authority rests with that. Your identity rests with that. And so what God, is, what God had to do he really worked a miracle because most of the time people establish themselves locally before they go international. But God did a reverse thing with you because what? Deliverance had to come another way. Your notoriety, your respect, who you are, your acknowledgement, it was forced another way. And I'm saying that to get them up other points because what's going to happen is the notoriety over there is going to provoke the notoriety that should have come over here that's what's going to happen okay so all is not lost Lord whatever way you want to do it we know the end result is going to be according to what you intended at the first. And those of us who are a people, especially the black folks, since all of us up in here are black, a similar thing is going on with the impotency of what's been dictated to us through systems. Okay? God is reversing. He's reversing the indoctrinations of why you think the way you think, why you perceive the way you perceive, why you interpret the way you perturbate, okay? And then why you keep getting the results other than what you should get. Because God made you the head and not the tail. The world dictated that position to you in being at the tail. We're supposed to be able to walk in the bank just like everybody else. And get equality of servitude and treatment, just like everybody else. Especially us, because what? We're the nature of the Canaanites. We have a particular grace on us. Okay? 
And part of that grace is, you go to Genesis. Give you some revelation of um, where it talks about God planted the garden. Then he put Adam in the garden. And in doing so, and the reason uh, for that, is that God knows our human tendencies, especially when we've been indoctrinated with impotent thinking, impotent uh, rationalization, okay? And we get, what, impotent results. And so, what has happened is this. The world is like a car driving in one direction. And that's in reverse. Okay. We know what's the norm. Is that you drive what? Going straight, going forward. And so what the world has indoctrinated us with. Is the impotency of. The reverse order of what I just said. God had to get. Abraham out from among his kin from his father's house and he said what well, wherever it is that I tell you to go he said there I'm going to make of you a great nation well we know most of us are stuck here in the United States right and if coronavirus and whatever it is is trying to tell us to go to another country, we know that's what pretty much out of our, you know, it's impossible to a degree. So what God has to do to provocation, a miracle is forced, whereas what? He's going to actually dismantle your impotency right here where you are. He's going to bankrupt the systems that have enslaved you and caused this impotency. Amen. Where your livelihoods, your businesses, your aspirations have all been what? Somewhat aborted. And if not aborted, lying dormant. We're in the moment where you all are going to see miracle change in regards to your impotency and whatever your lack was, whether it's financial, whether it's spiritual, whether it's moral, whether it's emotional, whether it's relationship-wise, where it's what? Acknowledgement-wise, where it's whatever it is, your product-wise, it's all getting ready to change. Clap your hand. Tell somebody your impotent days are over. Your impotent days are over. I can't seem to get. I've been working this business how many years? I've been working who I am. I've been working my gift. How long? I've been plowing this field how long? And I still seem like what? I can't make headway. And every time I make a hundred steps forward. I make a thousand backwards. Because I'm up against the impotency of reverse order with the enemy. Corrupt people in high places have what? Have set against you that God is now coming against. Clap your hands. See, this is where I got a problem with Nicodemus. Yes, I said Nicodemus. Because <laughs> Nicodemus is uh, of the confused impotency of, of how we're indoctrinated. Why? These are people who put on airs and give the what? 
and give the air of being intelligent, the most intelligent, the most professional, you know, the most validated, but he's yet telling you the reverse order of what God did is go back into your mama's womb. So then, this is why God has to reverse the order of flesh. That's why he has to endow us as he did in the day of Pentecost. How many know we'll do another visitation because of the impossibilities that we face right now? God's got to do another visitation. Because otherwise we are what? We are bound, we are trapped and snared. And we are confined. And that's the very thing God wants to what? Dismantle. See, God's going to liberate you in the midst of your confinement. God's going to make you rich in the midst of your lack. God's going to make you heal in the midst of what? Whatever it is. That's come against you. Thus the miracle has begun. The world, even the earth itself, when God created, what? It carried an air of impotency about it. The Bible said it was void and without form. You know when stuff void and when stuff our form stuff don't, you know, it's like food that, you know, until you put some salt and pepper in it, Amen. until you put some hot sauce on it, <laughs> until you put your favorite fish fry stuff on it, until you put some garlic on it, it's just like the earth. It's void. Is what? It's generic. It's tasteless. Until you accentuate it. With something that will accent it. And you give it what? The true identity of flavor. That now you can enjoy. What well, God is accentuating your moment right now. And it's, going, it's happening by way of miracles. Right now. That's right. That's why you want to stay in position. Do not abandon your purpose. Do not abandon your post. Do not abandon your fellowship. Because it's all tied into that. It is part of the covenant. Wherein daily he loadeth us with benefits. You said, well, I haven't seen it. No, you haven't seen it. You, you haven't seen it on the wise of what he's getting ready to manifest. Because all you've been going through is process. And see, while you're going through process, at the same time, the enemy has been trying to confuse and dilute the process by way of reverse order. That's Nicodemus telling you, Go back in your mama's womb. That's telling the butterfly to go back in the cocoon. That's telling you to go back to Africa when you were born here. You're going to reverse the order of something ordained by God. Wherein, in doing so, the powers that be are in the worst fight they could, have, they could have ever picked with God in this moment we're in right now. See, God's saying, like he told Pharaoh, in this moment right now, you need to let my folk go. Which means, letting, in letting them go, you let everything else about them go. See, take your hand off the health care. Take your hand off Social Security. Take your hand. You can go down the list. 
He said what? Let all of it go. Or else. He told Pharaoh, we saw the or else when Pharaoh didn't respond the way God what? Said. The way God commanded. We saw the or else. Like one black man years ago, Jim Crow era, era told a white man when he said, uh, so and so, that's my, that's my cow, that's my turkey. He said, no, that ain't your turkey, that ain't your cow. He said, now, so and so, if you don't give me that turkey and that cow, it's going to be our else. The black man turned around went in his house. He said, okay, uh, you we'll just throw a name out there. And I came, where, 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 where you going? I'm going to get your RLs. <laughs> God told Pharaoh, I'm coming with your RLs. And that black grandpa came out there with his shotgun. And the white man went on his way. Ain't racist, I'm just using... But I know. <coughs> I got your or else. Everything that's come against you, everything that's made you impotent, God got your or else. God said, What? I'm going to put the period on this sentence, I'm going to put the ending on this thing. Okay, because I've got to prove to you that I'm still your God. Yeah. And you still my Because when it's time to fight, God will tell you sit over there and get, to get out the popcorn. But it's it's been to be some it's been to be some stuff. Okay, up in here. Feathers flying, whatever you can think of. <laughs> Because God knows how to skin the cat better than anybody, don't he? God can skin the squirrel. He can skin the, the, the uh, what's that thing that's think that, that's gone? Skin him too. God ain't scared of the skunk. He made him. They had to loosen up the atmosphere just a bit. Let's go to St. Mark. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Now, let's, let's go to, let, let me stay on this guard thing first. Now, here's the world. Y'all know the Capital One commercial. What's in your wallet? God ain't asking you. God did not start this out asking you what was in your wallet. He started out planting the garden, putting Adam in. Yes. You the Adam. So I'm asking you, since God planted your garden, what's in your garden? Hmm. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. That's why God planted the garden himself. Because leave it up to us, we'll have Kentucky Fried Chicken up in our garden. We'll have Popeyes in our garden. And somebody going to say, I do better than that. I got Maryland Chicken up in my garden. You know, because we got to show we more intelligent than the one. Where you ain't supposed to, none of y'all supposed to have none of that in the garden. Because God didn't put that in the garden. Okay? God put everything that grew. Herbs and all of that. We have been indoctrinated with this impotency. Okay? See, this watermelon. So what if God had made you see this? Made your mama see this. Your daddy see this. I 
have to say to daddy because he's the one who carries the seed. So what if he received this? You wouldn't be here right now. Because the lack of seed indicates impotency. And we gloating over, I like my chicken boneless. What if the chicken didn't have no bone in it? Would that be some kind of funny looking chicken walking around with no bone in it? That stuff seedless. You, then you ain't gonna have no seed. After you eat that, it's gonna be over. Okay? No more watermelon. Think about it. If you seedless, no more children. And see, we don't understand the enemy is working against the be fruitful and multiply. That is the grace and the glory of the created nature, creative nature of God. And that's who you are. Because God is what? Imparted that same grace to you. Because remember back then, folk was having 10, 12 children, 15 children. Some of y'all done fell behind. You want me to pray for you? Yes, you do. Back there shaking her head. Some of y'all need about 10 of them. <laughs> Work that farm. <laughs> Feed them chickens. <laughs> Ain't that right, person? Ain't that hit me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. Oh, that felt good, Lord, getting that. Get it off me. Get that off me. So what's in your God? Hmm? See, the reverse psychology of the world versus God's kingdom, it, it's illustrated in the text. Yes, sir. It's what, it's not what, what goes into a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of a man. Okay? I mean, the same is true even in the natural sense. When you what? When you eat food, when you ingest food, it don't present itself the same way as when it comes out of you, does it? Now, which one you want? You want the last part or the first part? No, but see, the world telling you you want, you want, you want the last part. See, what goes into you. Because their thing was, your disciples didn't wash their hands. Them Negroes was dirty on the inside. See, that that's what Jesus was talking about. They talking about, you know, they got a problem with them. Y'all don't wash your hands. You need to wash you from the inside out. Okay? Your spirit dirty, everything about you dirty. Your mind dirty. And you talking about washing hands? They don't wash hands down there in hell. They don't, ain't nobody washing their hands down there. God made plans and planted Adam's garden without his what? Permission. Some things you ought just ought to be glad God doing for you without your permission. God said, you just do this. So you're going to go over there and you're going to put something in there that ain't got no business over there. Like a Kentucky fried chicken. Like, I need some meat up in there. I need some chicken. In my garden. What comes out of a man 
And the world know they can indoctrinate you with something. That's why he told them, be careful of the leaven. They thought he was talking about food. Follow the things he wanted for it. You know? Neck bones and rice. You say, I ain't talking about, see y'all, y'all so impotent. Y'all, you all are so, you know, the nature of flesh. You cannot perceive spiritual things to understand. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to warn you about this poison doctrine they're going to put in you. And Jesus, what, told them. He told the scribes and Pharisees, these were Jews. who were supposed to be what? The spiritual, yeah, having all the spiritual acuity and all that kind of stuff. And they was dumb as a box of rocks. When it comes to spiritual things. You can laugh. They was. They was dumb. Remember Nicodemus? Talking about Jesus. See, sometimes people are asking a question because they don't want you to perceive their stupidity. See, they're really telling you this is what I believe. But I'm going to ask you a question because I don't want you to know what I really believe because I don't want to be made to look like a fool. So what Nicodemus did, what he asked Jesus, can a man go back in his mama's womb? Just don't tell Jesus that's the way you think. You know how sometimes we answer a question with a question. Jesus asked them, who do men say I am? Who do you say I am? I don't care about what they think. I want to know what you think. Now I'm going to take it a step further. You got your mouth chicken up there in God's garden. That he put you in. Because some of them say, you know, I'm a leg man. I don't know where I'm going. Child, I'm a breast man. Dispel impotence. Okay? I'm going to reintroduce to you the original you. The one that's the head, the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Yeah. A lender, not a borrower. Because do you know the Moors were the richest people on the face of the earth? And they were black folk just like you. And their what? Their acumen was stolen. Okay? By our counterparts. You know what I'm talking about. Without me going there. No different than they came in and stole the land from those who it was indigenous to. So we have inalienable inherit and what? indigenous rights right here that God is getting ready to restore people. Because you know Jesus looked more like you than that man some of y'all got on that picture in your house. You got rid of that picture, ain't you? Jesus don't look like that. His hair wasn't that straight. He had some naughty hair. Okay. You know, kinky stuff like us. You need with a straightening comb. Relaxer. You know the deal. Yeah. That was the 
real Jesus. But that's the impotency they sold us. They dictated us. Everything looks like us because we got to control your perception. And we got to even control your perception of you and your God. And doing so, we can dictate your position in life. And God said, no longer will that be not so. Because I'm here in my sovereign moment. To change the reverse order of what has been implemented. I could go on and say some of us got a rib shank up in the gut. But you know, I like ribs. I like poke ribs. I like beef ribs. Whatever your, you know, your thing is. But it says here, and I'm just going to read it, in St. Mark, the, um, what is this, the seventh chapter, eighteenth verse, and he said unto them, Are you so without understanding also do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entering into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entered not into his heart, but into his belly, and goeth out into the draw, purging all meats. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. From within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulterous fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, Blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within. Who is Marcus? Who is Marcus? Somebody know Marcus? Who is Marcus? I hear that name every time I come up in here. I was sitting there and I heard Marcus so loud in my ear. How many times have I called him up? Six, seven. Almost every single time I come up in the phone. I, heard, I kept hearing the name ringing in my head. Marcus. He has a calling on him. And the enemy is really trying to do what I'm talking about. Render him impotent. As far as his calling. How old is he? He's about 17 now. What is he doing? You think he'll talk to me? You get, you get line into it. I mean, we might have to arrange something. Yes. Because I, I keep, it's, it's a reason I keep getting him. I, hear, I keep hearing that name, Marcus. Marcus, Marcus, Marcus. I don't remember that. But I know the last four or five times I don't call his name. Amen. There's a lady. It's like I see her running track. She likes to get involved with sports. And I see like a, her playing softball or something. Y'all know somebody? Like that? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Where is she at? I see this lady who plays like softball. Okay, she's an athletic kind of. Okay. And I have a said lady, but she looks athletic and tall to a degree. 
Y'all know, so you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where is she? I'm not sure. You haven't seen her in a while? Uh-uh. She needs to get back in fellowship. Somebody needs to talk to her. If you can. She really needs to get back in fellowship. Okay? So send this message. I don't know the lady name. I just saw her. Okay? Alright, I'm going to continue to speak to... Uh, so whoever this lady is, I see something about a relationship too. You know a person? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Like they say, anyway. <laughs> back to back to earth <laughs> people cross me like you know y'all crossed up oh lord anyway um, give me a minute See, the thing, the reason I'm talking about this seed thing, this is this is a, a grave attack of the enemy to stop reproduction. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because the purpose behind the indoctrinated perception of what the enemy has done to our thought our process is to hijack the Creator's creation of implemented order to replenish itself through seed reproduction. See, the enemy makes it look harmless like he did the woman in the garden. God don't want you to eat from that tree because you're going to be like him. He knows how to play it up, smooth it over, and make it appear what? Harmless. Matter of fact, make it appear that you're missing something or something is being withheld from you mm. as a result. Mm. So yeah, he plays it up like that. So what do they do? You can buy a seed this watermelon. But if you're a farmer and you plant seed this watermelon, are you going to have seed? That's going to be it. That's going to be the end of what you're doing, isn't it? This is why you got to separate yourself from those who have the spirit of Nicodemus. I'm going to get into that. Go to, I think it's 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.1. And somebody started reading. I just gave you an intro into what God is getting ready to, uh, to change. Who's Mary? Mary. Marilyn. I hear Mary. Somebody know of Mary? Who? Know Mary. You know a Mary? Where is she at? Um, she's, she lives on Alabama Street. Do you do you talk to her a lot? Or do not you, a lot. Not a lot? Every now and then. Every now and then. I have talked to her recently. You have talked with her recently. <laughs> she, does she have some health issues? She really needs a miracle. Okay? Have you talked to her about coming to church? 
Yep. Okay. That woman needs a miracle. Uh, the next time you talk to her, just in a inconspicuous way, you try to encourage her because there's healing in this house. She needs a miracle. Okay? Next time you talk to her. Because her, her health issues were worse than what she knows. You hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Talk to her, talk to her. You did. Huh? I just held in your arms. You just held in your arms. Okay. You need to talk to her some more. Okay. In the front of all these people outside. Sound so close together, you know, sometimes I don't know uh, the exactitude of what it is. I know it's in there. Hey. You know she brought some of this on herself. Jesus. You know that, right? God care about, let me tell you something. People are more confused than what y'all know. Folk now don't know which way to go. Okay? And some people just carrying themselves in a way to try to save face. They don't want you to know they at their wit's end. So we got to be discerning. And we got to catch some folk. Okay, for real. We got to speak to whatever that issue. Okay, because a lot of it has to do with with all these unknowns that are going on. Folk are scared. They scared. They don't understand. They don't have the reference point that we have to what the plague that we know about. That God worked in, and I'm getting right into my point, 2 Timothy 2, 1. Okay? These people are confused. The Bible says what? Thou therefore, my son, and the Lord talking to you, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you the reason why that is the case. There's another strength. There's another manashike bosai. Ike se There's another endowment that's already uh, and it reminds me of when Jesus said Thou art my son in whom I will please. In other words, the dove of the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the presence of the people. 
And the Lord saying to you, you his son, and whom he's well pleased. And with that, as it was with Jesus, is also with you, that God is bringing another grace to you. And part of that other grace is what's missing here in America. You got more of it somewhere else in a foreign country than you got here. But that other grace is coming to you here. God's going to continue to expand the grace of your international prowess. But there's a, that other grace is coming here. And what it's going to do is going to help balance things. Okay. Yeah. So be strong in the grace but by shake kid both sides. Because how many know it's his grace that calls us to survive the coronavirus. Amen. Amen. And I'm finna talk to you about some grace. Amen. Amen. It's grace. As the reason why you are here without being what affected it's the grace of the blood that covers your life it's the grace that tells whatever's trying to what attack you keep it moving I got I, look God done took it a step further with me. The blood ain't over my door, but it's over my life. Amen. So you keep it moving. Amen. 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 Can't stop here. And see what God did through grace. This is why soldiers have to separate themselves, their lives from, from, from civilians. You are soldiers in God's army. This is why you have to separate yourself from the world. Because the process by which God endows you, authorizes you, gives you what? Potential. Where you have what? Been made impotent. Is what's needed right now for those who are confused because what? In you is the answer. In you is the revelation to what? To address their confusion. God fixed it like that. He allowed a plague to come into what plague? Because he knew at the end of the day, the folk, the same folk who avoided you, the same folk that shunned you, the same folk that misinterpreted you, the same folk who said you were nothing, are going to have to be redirected right back to you to get the answer out of this. So all of a sudden now, I'm, I'm important. I'm significant. Okay? Whereas before, I wasn't nothing. Where you had to beg your way, now they coming to look for you. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because uh, she, they course, I. God does nothing halfway. He didn't make half a lion. He didn't make half a bear. And he didn't make half a you. You are all together lovely. Okay? And everything about you is being perfected in your fellowship with him. That is the process. See, you are the seed, you are the potential in the earth realm, not only to repopulate and replenish, but to what? But to multiply in the same sense the glory of God, because you are the glory of God, being the seed of God, being made in the image of God, being the reflection of God. And all that what? Even the Bible says ye are gods.
is your product. See, the farmer, going back to the seed, the farmer has no notoriety. You notice you don't hear about, you just don't hear about farmers. They're not people who are out front. But we know the importance of farmers is that what? We're able to go and get food so that we can survive. But they don't make themselves of any reputation at all. They just behind the scenes, you know, feeding the chickens, growing the what? Corn, the, 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 the beans, the peas, whatever they grow. And you see the what? The manifestation of what you need at your disposal. Amen. And so he has no notoriety and just trying to what? He ain't trying to be seen. He ain't trying to make a name for himself. And I'm telling you, you are the product of God. And if you just do simply what he said, your product going to speak for itself. You don't have to make yourself a name, or you don't have to what? Run after notoriety. The Bible says that blessing will come upon you and overtake you. Yes. See, this ain't about chasing a dollar. This is about chasing God. Amen. And if you chase God, all of what you're looking for comes with it. Amen. Free of charge. Mm. They don't make themselves a no reputation at all. What's glamorous about being a farmer? Because y'all know y'all don't like to be out there in the hot sun like that all day. I'll talk about man the garden. Out there water and stuff and fertilizing stuff. But isn't it funny? Those who are deemed as less important are of most importance. Because you know if you didn't have a custodian in that building, you know OSHA shut that building down. And everybody looks down on the custodian. Everybody looks down on the farmer. And the devil got everybody looking down on you. But how, but what? One thing I know, and I'm telling you, you're going to rise again. Because what? Your place was not your volunteer position or acceptance of position. It was dictated to. Yes. You were told this is who you are. Versus what God, who God says you are. Now whose report we believe? If you develop a worthy product, won't your brand take care of itself? Yep. Yeah, you got what? Separate yourself from the norm. That'll be different. A soldier has to be separated from civilian because he has to be processed differently for the battle. He got to face a hard battle. And how many of us know those of us who are of uh, God's spiritual army? We'll process different. You got prophets who what? One prophet, God told him to marry a whore. And act like you happy doing it. <laughs> One of them he told, you need to eat human feces. And I don't want to see you crying. <laughs> and he negotiated with God. He said, now God, look at him. Can you, can you come a little bit more lenient than that? He said, okay, okay, well, eat cow dung. <laughs> you said pick your poison, right? <laughs> oh, both are poison. <laughs> So go to 2 Corinthians 6, 17. I'm not going to be with you too much. 
there's an anointing. And we foretell, we actually prepare atmospheres for the new induction, for the new thing that God is getting ready to do because it's with the prophet that God said, I will do nothing except I reveal it to my servants and prophets. So I'm letting you know what he about to do. Matter of fact, it's already in motion. Y'all notice companies all of a sudden throwing hundreds of million dollars at the black calls? Couldn't y'all have done that long time ago? Couldn't y'all reform some stuff long time ago? What's happening in the moment that's so different? God has risen. And when God rises, you rise with him. Somebody to read it. It says what? Well, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not what? The unclean thing is the stuff we picked up that don't have nothing to do with the sanctity, okay, with the, with the potential, with the real identity of who we are. We pick up stuff along the way. Residue. Mm-hmm. You know the stuff you don't like? On your stuff, residue. So the Holy Spirit now is filtering our lives and our positions a whole different way. See, you have you have worked your business, you and your wife. And it, and it feels like more setbacks than set up. It feels like, like more losses than, more, than gains. It feels like sometimes, why am I even doing this? I, why, what did I get myself into? But when you keep what? Showing God. Your show of faith. That's the stored up thing that God remembers about you in your time of what? Of, of change. God remembers how you all kept plowing against all the odds when the money was funny, like they say. When it wasn't doing what you imagined and what you expected. And so you had to encourage each other. Okay? But it was processing you for this day. Where your change finally comes. Because God can bring what you have stored up in your faith and your loyalty with him. He can bring it from the north, south, east, and west. And it ain't got nothing to do with what you did. It's called favor. It's this grace that I'm talking about right now. Being strong in the grace. That's why I say do not abandon. Enduring what? Hardness as a good soldier. Because God is what? Giving you his, his strength. His supernatural ability to what? To go through it. To endure. Him getting glory. Is what you are partaker of. As the end result. Of your stay in the course. Don't abandon your purpose. Don't abandon your witness. Don't abandon your testimony. It means more now. Than it ever been. Because what? It's the only answer people got. Is what you tell them. Everything else is confused. Everything else ain't working. The jobs ain't working. No. Everything they've been putting their trust in, God snatched it. Wrong.
Rona snatched it. Rona stopped it. That's her name. Rona. Y'all know Rona. <laughs> she don't discriminate. Okay? She taking all hostages, ain't she? The difference is, we have a peace that passes what? What's understood. So, and people want to see, people are going to be drawn to you and say, you ain't scared? No. What are going to be scared of God? Bigger than the coronavirus. You, you ain't know that? Amen. Amen. God, I wish somebody had told me that. They tried to tell you a long time ago, but you had your head stuck in the sand. And that impotence that folk, folk was telling you. See, wrong to pull your head out the sand to face the reality. Because you know when an octopus put his head in the sand, all of that's sticking out. <laughs> you wonder why all that getting attacked. Because <laughs> the indoctrinated stuff that was sold to you, it had your head in the sand. And all that got beat up. <laughs> That, that ostrich got to be a dumb bird. You hear me? He gonna stick his little old head in the sand and expose all that. And you and the devil just tanned it up. <laughs> tanned it like this is a brand new. One. But I'm safe. My head. Backside. Where we at? Go ahead. The unclean thing, and I will what? Receive you. So what we done picked up along the way? What they done told us? We, we born thinking we're less than. We're born thinking. And, and, and the folk who were in Jim Crow day, you know, you do something that looks... You know, like you, you against, you going against the grain. God, please don't do that, because they'll, they'll kill us. No, they'll kill y'all. I believe in God. Okay? Who will you put your trust in? You put your trust in what they told you. Ain't that the same thing the scribes and Pharisees? You were telling folk, you caused men to what? Transgress the commandment of God by teaching them your tradition. Y'all don't what? Put stuff in folk heads. Y'all done told them about circumcision and all this stuff. And the same people who telling you won't do what they telling you. That's the hypocrite. He ain't over there getting circumcised. Go on, go, go, on, go, go on over there and get yourself cut. Now you go get cut first. You send your children to school first. All right. See, we've been the sacrifice. It's your time. Prove what you're saying by what you're telling me to do. You do it first. I follow you. Since I'm the tail anyway, ain't that following you? So you go do it. You go stick your head in.
and wherein he will receive you. Okay. Paul didn't abandon the cause, but you know some of us, when, when they get real tight, when they get real, when they get down to the skin, where when them disciples knew Jesus was finna die, finna get on that cross, Peter started cussing. <laughs> ain't going. God, ain't going. <laughs> ain't, I wasn't in the choir. I wasn't with him. I ain't in his church. Oh, you throw in the middle of the bus now. And you don't understand this is the real part of the process that shows whether or not you're who you say you are. Okay. They beat Paul so bad. Listen to what I'm saying. They beat Paul so bad. They, they dragged him outside of the city. When I tell you they whipped him, they beat Paul till he was almost on his last breath. Now let me show you the grace of God. Them people's out there crying and screaming. You know how we go. Paul, Cause Paul looked like he was dead. You know Paul got up. All that what? All that blood, all that whatever was going on with him. Paul went right back in that city and started preaching again. Uh, don't raise your hand. How many y'all? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> How many y'all after what? After you have resisted unto the blood, you're gonna go right back in there and not abandon the cause. <laughs> Y'all bring me some, uh, what that stuff, the witch hazel, and bring me, no, I ain't going back. Uh -uh. Yeah, I can't do it. Can't do it. No, you can't abandon the call. Look at the grace that was on Paul. Paul was beat to a pulp. Got up and went back in the city. Now you just got your tail whipped to the nth degree. Within an inch, like they don't say, of your life, and you're going to get up and go back in there? Come on, saints. Come on, can I get a, can I, can I get a, uh, can I get a witness? Come on, can I get a witness? Can, can, can I get somebody like Paul? Because you know, I'm going to be like Paul. I'm going to be like Jesus. All right, now Jesus said, now you, can you drink, can you drink from this cup? You know what's in this cup? Mm -hmm. They gon' they gonna beat you with you no know, they use horse whips. They took it a step further. They put little they put little pieces of metal in that whip they be they plowed up Jesus back with. And then he said what? He passed the grace on to you and said, by your by my strike, you healed. They plowed up my back, but it was for you. It was for your healing. It was for your miracle. Glory. He took it and passed it on to you. That's the kind of grace on you. So you ain't got no business running from nothing. You ain't got no business scared of nothing. You got to understand the grace that's on you. You gotta endure hardness as a good soldier, you're fearfully wonderfully made. God graced us with his image. And with his image is the power, is the reflection, is the representation of who he is. And it's all about glory. God is restoring you not only as a people, but as what identifies with his glory. Okay, remember. God always used somebody like you in some of the most important episodes as it pertained to Jesus. Who carried the cross for Jesus? A black man named Simon. Y'all remember that? 
Y'all think God done forgot y'all for that? Y'all think God done forgot y'all for the blood that's crying from the ground? Wherein what? Your predecessors have given their lives for your position in life right now. You think God done forgot about that? That blood is still crying from the ground. And God's going to address it right now. That's right. Their blood is crying from the ground. That's why those who appear to have escaped by the law that was written for them, they're not going to escape God's judgment. The cop that killed somebody, had behind a bed, he's not, he not going to escape. You got past the law, but you didn't get past God. That's where they trick you. Well, I'm free. God grace you. God grace you through what you came through. He grace you. Yes, he did. He grace you. That grace still on you. And it'll work for anything else that comes up in your life. As long as you believe God. The grace still on you. Lord. Where you showed God your faith against the odds and work in your business. The grace still there. It has what? Matured. It has come to maturity. Thank you, Lord. Somebody in here know a Mike, Michael. I see a man. He's a caterer of some sort. Somebody know him. Okay. I see this man. Anybody know this caterer? saying to you all this. Sometimes the word, the Bible says what? Well, one plant, another water. God get the increase. Every seed has a germination period. So just because you don't see, see the seed come up out the ground that you expect right away, that don't mean it ain't germinating. That don't mean they didn't hear you. But sometimes you got to keep watering them. I ain't say I push it on them. I said just keep watering them. Keep refreshing them. Keep reminding them your answers in God. Your miracle is in God. Thank you, Lord. Your peace is in God. Okay? Your money. That ain't funny is in God. Your what? Your expected end result that keeps getting tripped up 
and never coming out the way you expect it, that expected end is in God. God is the only we, only one can guarantee having worked together everything, good and bad, and still making it come out. What he said, it will come out of me. That I said to God. Who's Margaret? I know somebody doing Margaret. Yeah? Who's Margaret? There's a Margaret associated with our ministry in the kingdom. Yeah. She's the wife of uh, Apostle Christian. Yeah. Her name is Margaret. Okay, keep praying for her. Keep praying for her. I do know what it is. Um, it's that y'all got the answer. Where are people going to find what they should do when God left the pandemic as an unknown? Because y'all know just like I know. Y'all ain't going to be the first one to take that vaccine. <laughs> y'all ain't taking that. <laughs> Let them take it first. <laughs> y'all know that's how y'all think. I ain't taking Because child, they putting stuff. They doing, if, look, if they corrupt out in the wide open, y'all know they doing underhanded stuff and hidden agenda. Amen. Amen. That's ought to be your what? Your insight. Like the Bible said, Lo, I walked by the field of smoke. The man who was void of understanding whose vineyard okay was all grown up with thorns and nettles and everything. And then there was a stone wall that was broken down. And he said, I looked and I received instruction. Do you receive instruction when you know you got the answer and you won't say nothing? Do you see a piece of paper on the floor? And you don't receive instruction to pick it up. That ain't my job. If you in fellowship in the church, make it your habit. And think of it as what? As unto God. And everything I do. We know it ain't your job as it pertains to job. But it is your what? Your revelatory acumen to know ain't supposed to be that like it is. Now I'm not saying grab something like us did. That's forbidden. That ain't what I'm talking about. You know. But the Bible talks about how the man who what? Who's lazy and who's slowful. You know, it's, a, it's a line out there in the street. Lions don't live in the street. Come on now, in the jungle. You just lazy. Okay? The lion out there in the street. If y'all, if y'all knew lions in the street, y'all would y'all tails wouldn't be in the street with you. You ain't nowhere in the street. Call lions out there. I hear the name Corey. Who's Corey? Nephew. That's your nephew? Yeah. Where is he? Orlando. He's in Orlando? When the last time y'all talked with him? Been a while. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. Need to check on him. Yeah, just check on him. I 
See, God's showing y'all, because see, I can pick up on people in here. It, just like God giving them folk name, he give me your name. The same word of knowledge. So he's pinpointing the power that's in you to change the perspective of people who are scared and confused. They know they can't put their trust in the government, even the ones who are bamboozled and tricked into doing. They know they can't do it no more. So where's the answer? Let me ask you the question, where's God? In you? So if God is in you, ain't the answer in you? Amen. Ain't the revelation in you? Amen. I'm going to tell y'all something. When you all speak to the, to the confusion and to the darkness and to the fear of these folk, Paul said, we saw into you spiritual things, should not we what? Get your carnal stuff. Y'all don't know that some of y'all miracles, the keys to folk what? The property, the houses, the land, to money. Folk what? In exchange, because they know ain't no answer but the answer you gave them. So what is it worth to them? Giving you their carnal stuff. That they refuse to give you before then. But when a human being is desperate, just like who was it that sold their birthright? Esau. Esau got desperate, didn't he? He sold something that was forbidden out of being desperate. And these people are going to what? They're going to give y'all stuff. They're going to bless y'all with stuff when you give them the answer. And even some of them that don't have it, God's going to bring the answer from somewhere else. He's going to bring the blessing from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, you're going to get blessed. Oh, God, that's going to happen. Nevertheless, you're going to get blessed. Yes. Tell somebody, nevertheless, nevertheless. you're going to get blessed. You're going to get blessed. Yeah. God got a way with words, don't he? Thank you. Thank you for the glory. We've made God's glory impotent to his purpose. What God said was good was an expression of his glory through creation. And that was his what? That was his grace extended to you. You also are progenitors of, of creation. That's why he said, be careful what you say, because you should have what you say. You say, I'm sick, you should have it. You say, I'm well, you should have it. You say, I'm rich, you should have it. You say, I'm poor, you should have it. Death and life being in the power of the tongue is part of your greatest power. You know, because... The Bible says, no man can tame the tongue. Only the Spirit of God can tame the tongue. No man can tame it. Because God knows what the power of the tongue, because he knows what his words do when he said, let there be. And you have the same power working in you. Let it be what needs to be. That should be your prayer. Pray what needs to happen. That's how you pray. Lord, how do I pray? Pray what needs to happen. You know something ain't right. Pray, pray what? Pray what needs to happen. All on your job. Learn how to take what? Authority over your atmosphere, whether it's in your house, in your, on your job, or wherever you are. Take what? Control of the atmosphere. That is your right and entitlement, being who you are. And y'all going to begin to see the atmosphere give up to you what's your right to have. You know what your right is to have? Speak to it. How many children you got? 
two. Two. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, I didn't say oh. Oh. <laughs> Somebody else said something about that. <laughs> you know you're going to have more than two children, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which means, I don't, I don't really... I know I haven't seen you before, I, I, but I don't remember stuff about people. Mm -hmm. That's for a reason. That means you're going to be married. Yes. Right? Right. Yeah, that's what that means. <laughs> when it's time. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh. How many boys you got? Two. You got two boys? me to his son wife had been trying to have a child for 10 years the doctor said his sperm count was too low you know all of that he was he wasn't fertile now they didn't tell me none of that all I know is in the meeting the Lord told me when his daughter-in-law, Pastor's daughter-in-law came up, which is his son's wife. The Lord spoke to me and said, I wonder why everybody looking at me crazy. I said, you're going to have a child, and it's going to be a boy. Everybody looking at me crazy. I'm looking around like, what in the world is going on? So he waited till after service. He said, you don't know. He said, my son prayed. And his his wife, my daughter-in-law, been trying to have a child for 10 years. And you said in front of all these people, she finna have a child, a boy. Because I knew, I saw in the spirit, she was miscarried. She couldn't hold up, she couldn't hold the baby. But this time, tell somebody, God put a word on it. God put a word on it. Just like God putting a word on you right now. I said, by the time I come back, the second time, you're going to be pregnant with this child. He called me. Prophet Palmer, do you know my daughter-in-law? Then carried the child, this child, farther than she's ever carried a child. They don't see no signs of you know, imminent dangers for us of miscarriage and enough. I said, well, God put a word on me. I said, that's why I don't want nobody to tell me nothing. Don't tell me nothing. She done had that boy a baby. And then I told her what he was going to do. I said, he's going to be in sports. He's going to become a coach. What? 15, 20 years later, I, he, they asked me to come back up there. He a coach. Football team, track team, whatever. It is. He's a coach. Because God see what you could never see. Okay? And what I see about this ministry, it ain't it ain't here right now. It's bigger than this. It's bigger than this. This been brewing. This been incubating for a while. This is a slow. This is what you call a slow. You know, a slow slow roast. Y'all been slow. 
slow roast in the oven. See, when, when you slow roast, when you cook it in that crock pot, mm. the meat fall off the bone, don't it? <laughs> so he making y'all ready yeah. that the meat literally falling off the bone. Okay? He got y'all in the crock pot to slow cook. But the best tasting food, some of the best tasting food come out of that crock pot. Y'all know. I'll put them beans up in that crock pot. Let them what? After you soak them, season them, let them cook. I don't know how long y'all let them cook overnight. That's how y'all do it. Let them slow cook overnight. Y'all got to put a bodyguard around that crock pot. <laughs> Look at you. And some Jiffy cornbread, whatever cornbread you know you like. 